So Beth Plath is the executive director of the Research Data Alliance U.S. region. And there's Beth. And if you, how are you doing? Uh, Hello, how are you? Hello. I'm well, thank you. And, um, and so she advocates for trusted open science in the United States and the engagement of RDA's international voices in topics of relevance to the United States. So Beth is one of the founding members of the Research Data Alliance back in 2013 and has served on the inaugural um, RDA Technical Advisory Board Chair. Currently, she is the Michael and Laurie Byrne McRoby uh, Professor of Computer, uh, yes, Computer Engineering at Indiana University Bloomington, where she serves as the Executive Director of Pervasive Technology Institute and the Chair of the Department of Intelligent Systems Energy. So Beth, the floor is yours. Great, thank you so much. Can I share some slides here? Is that gonna be possible? I guess it can. Y'all seeing, Laura, you seeing my slides? Yes, I can see that your slides. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, let me move quickly through this. First of all, I'm just, I'm really delighted that that this community is coming together to develop um, a basically, you know, we won't call them standards, but but just to get, to get agreement on, uh, with bringing community expertise, to get in agreement on things that will help with the interoperability and sharing of the products of research and the, and the data that you need. I think it's fabulous. I think it's really, really important. I think what I'm going to talk about, and I'm talking about very briefly, I think will complement and I hope help amplify what it is that you're doing. Uh, as Laura mentioned, the Research Data Alliance has been around for 10 years now. Um, you know, it's basically trying to facilitate through working groups and interest groups, similar to what you're doing here, to facilitate the consensus around uh, problems that the community identifies, grassroots community identifies. And then when those recommend those outputs are produced and they're called recommendations or lightweight standards, those are produced, then it helps amplify those. So if I may just kind of give a foreshadowing here, what I'm going to talk about is two entities, the Research Data Alliance, and for U.S. specific um, uh, challenges, the Research Data Alliance U.S. that can help you amplify what it is you're doing here. So the RDA U.S. We are it's it's a regional entity of the of the RDA. So we're we're focused on open science problems in the U.S. We're a partner of the Global Research Data Alliance. We are representing the United States region. Um, RDA US, for those of you who have some familiarity with it, has been around for a while. It's been focused in different directions. Um, it is it is now focused specifically on open science problems in the United States. Um, it's, it's a fairly small organization with a very targeted mission. So it's advocating for and advancing solutions to US issues. I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to show you a little, an organization of what we are, and then I'm going to show you a picture of why I think it I why I think RDA can help what you're doing here in in in, in um, MARDA. Um, you know, at bottom up, like RDA is, like I think MARDA is. Um, and it's, uh, I'll skip this, you know, we've got a uh, set of program officers, we've got a program office, I'm the executive director, um, we've got task force leads that are basically we're, we're targeting in cyber infrastructure and AI, open science and software um, in a steering committee. We've got this facilitation program, Tigris, that I'm going to talk about, as well as a curated solutions bank, and we're developing training um, um, opportunities, um, fellowship opportunities, but that's a little a little bit longer term. Again, we just just kicked off uh, formally back in October. So let me just take you through this diagram that I hope is I hope helps um, make the argument for the value proposition that RDA and RDA US could bring um, to to your community. Suppose if we start on that left hand side, that green bullet, there's some kind of need. And it's again, as I said, we're targeting this is the facilitation program in the US. So we're targeting a need in the US. Doesn't mean that it only has to be a US thing, but it is a, a need that a need that's identified in in, in the US open science space. Um what what RDA US can do through its Tigris program is it it can help shape that local need. So it could take something that that you all are are working on and have gotten to a point of of 
um, you're feeling comfortable about it and you want international more, if you want broader perspective around it, well, maybe then that that product goes into RDA and gets facilitated by the Tigris facilitation program. So the Tigris will help uh, shape that local need and and get any critical mass that might it might need. It might not need critical mass. So it draws on the RDA US community in order to do that. And it also draws on the representation of its partner organizations that 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 it's connected with. And then it works through the mechanisms of the RDA. And and you know what's nice about RDA is RDA brings an international perspective and an international view onto what might be, if we look at it from a U.S. perspective, obviously I'm in the U.S., which might be a, U, a U.S. specific solution that needs the, the the lens, the international lens, and could benefit and strengthen, be strengthened from the international lens. Well, RDA provides that. It is one of the few organizations that is international by design, and I think that's a strength here and not not a weakness. So the it would the the product that we were talking about that comes out of MARDA would 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 be would then go through a working a, a 12 to 18 month working group process in RDA benefit from this international collaboration. And then there would be an output and that output would be globally informed and that output would be facilitated and amplified through the Tigris program. So Tigris is helping with the formation. It's helping with the facilitation of that working group in RDA. And then it's helping with the amplification of the output. Again, we, ju we just kicked off. So we're, we're right now in the process of identifying um, working groups that could benefit from this facilitation. We're looking at not only new working groups, but we're also looking at um, existing working groups that are that are on topics of particular relevance in the U.S. And we're we're in the process there. You can reach out to me if if, if this is something that's interesting to you. Let me just give you. And I'm I'm moving quickly, but let me just give you an example of several of the um, relevant materials. Um, uh, working group. Uh, products that have come out. One of them is a resource registries working group. There's people from NIST on this call. I think some of you may have been involved in this. So it's a registry federation for material science data discovery, lays out a blueprint for creating a federation, enumerates requirements on the standards that make the registries interoperable with the federation. So this is a little bit earlier a, a group. Um, the results may be meaningful within this context. Um, this is an ongoing group. It's a, a trust principles and adoption. They're, they're, the group is taking the uh, trust principles. So it's clarifying the relationship between the trust principles for digital repositories, their certification process and metrics, and uh, clarifying again their, their relationship with other frameworks like fair care, desirable characteristics, and so on. Um, again, ongoing working group. And that third example is something that is just coming out in the, the stage where it's getting community comment. It's called the Data Repository Attributes Working Group. And basically what they did and what I, what I really like about it, they came up with 17 attributes that every repository should have, and they grounded it in these use cases. Okay, the researcher use case, the repository manager use case, the repository developer, the publisher, the funder, the registry, and came up with a set of 17 um, attributes that satisfies all of these different personas. And I thought that was a really nice approach. Again, this is an open comment right now, gives you an idea. So if you are, you know, if if you are a repository, um, if you're running a repository, this this particular recommendation could could be beneficial to you. I think it's well done. Um, so anyway, so I'll, I'll end there. So again, so so I, I encourage that we continue discussing. So RDA could be the next step for the outputs of what you're doing here. Again, what you're doing here in this initial phase is bringing a community the, the within a discipline, bringing a community together to come up with a consensus um, recommendation on something, RDA can amplify that and can bring a broader perspective into it, which may or may not improve it. But then it gets the stamp of approval from RA uh, from RDA and can leverage RDA's respected reputation. So RDA is not a standards body, but it, it does have a reputation in putting out very strongly consensus-based and internationally-based 
products. And I think that, and it is, I should say, it is moving towards facilitating to actually have its products be standards. And then the second thing is the RDA US facilitates outputs, facilitates the process, the, the whole process and the outputs for that would give the, the, the activities here stronger impact uh, nationally and internationally. So that's my, you know, that that that's my pitch. I'm hoping that we can be kind of a downstream um, um, aid to bringing about what I'm hearing in the working groups. I'm hearing some really nice open science uh, problems that you're working on. I think you've got actually the right format to do. I think you know Dave and Laura are doing an excellent job here. And if we can, if we can help with the amplification, facilitation, whatnot. Um, we're, we're delighted to do that. I think it's a great, it could be a great uh, um, uh, synergistic um, success for us. So I'll stop there. Great. Thank you, Beth. That was great. Um, we're really short on time. So I'm, I'm just going to uh, pose one question. And uh, we had talked, Beth, as you know, some of us participate in RDA here, and it's nice to have an organization to get it much broader reach into the materials community. Um, but there are problems that we face like sustainability of repositories, um, which we're gonna have breakouts that will address some of these. The trust issue is one that leads to leans towards that. But sustainability is an issue for everybody without regard for domain. So I'm wondering if you see a partnership that could happen with RDA US that helps us work with other domains on that common problem and maybe start to find umbrella solutions or uh, work more broadly than just within our domain, if you think that's valuable. No, and that's good. And and what what we've done in the the in, in identifying these target areas is is try to stimulate uh, conversations around topics that are specifically of interest to us. So and in, in, and we're we're fostering those. You know, we're not calling them working groups because RDA has its own formal working groups, but we are facilitating discussions and 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 I, I do think that RDA could could help there. RDA US could help there. Super. Well, and thank yeah, you. I think it would be a good platform for that, for those kinds of cross-discipline discussions too. Great. 